Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our gathering at St. John's United Church of Christ. This weekend, we celebrate the labors of our brothers and sisters around America and the world. Um, we want to announce that we will continue uh, our 10 a.m. start until at least the next congregational meeting in October. And we want to recognize the hand of God at work in our small but mighty congregation, from the baby shower to the food banks to the Samaritan Fund and community dinners and more. And speaking of the shower, it's coming up three weeks from yesterday. We'll be doing setup uh, Thursday and Friday, and we'd appreciate any volunteers that can show up and, and help out with that. We have a dozen agencies uh, that have committed to uh, tables and, and we'll set up for um, the lunch that's going to be catered this year. So some of the work is going to uh, be done for us, I guess, in terms of the food. Okay, if you didn't hear that, we have a bunch of stuff, a bunch of stuff to move from upstairs, that's mostly the large gifts uh, that we'll be giving away at the shower, and we're going to do that Thursday and Friday, did you say? Sunday. Sunday before the shower. Okay, so a week ahead of time, and uh, I think Bert has devised another ramp that we can just slide stuff down the stairs so we won't have to break our backs or knees going up and down the stairs doing that. We extend our hands of welcome to all our neighbors and our visitors today, no matter where in the world our neighbors might be. This is a time to raise our eyes and hearts and open our souls to God. We open our arms to the participation and leadership of the LGBTQ plus community Wherever you are in life's journey, there is a place for you here. We begin this service by acknowledging that we worship on the unceded sacred homeland of the Fox, Peoria, Anishinaabe, and Potawatomi peoples. We worship on the life-giving and nourishing Upper Grand River watershed. May that knowledge lead us to worship in humility, responsibility, and grace. Please rise for the call to worship and the music that follows. All God's creations gather to worship. We are the clay and God is the potter. God creates beauty in and through us. We are shaped and formed with God's love. We yield to the potter's hand we allow God to mend and transform us. God is the potter and we are the clay. We are our earthen vessels bearing the image of Christ. You can be seated. Let's join together in the opening prayer. Creator God, you are the artist of life. You continue to work in and through us, encouraging, supporting, renewing, and guiding. Create in us a willing spirit as you continue to transform us and our world. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's so great to see you. And I welcome all of our friends and visitors who are here for Darren and his baptism. Hi, Darren. Did you say hi to everybody? <laughs> We're going to try not to make him cry. Oh, look at that smile. Today we're talking about how much God loves each and every one of us and how God's love encircles us from the moment 
before our birth to the very end that we always are with God and God loves us and God cares about us and there is nothing that can separate us from that love and what better topic to have when we are having a baptism so now we come to the time in our service when we greet one another and say hello hello everybody on zoom so glad you could be with us make sure everybody on zoom is spoken to and greeted this morning and everybody here let's stand up if we're able and say hello to one another I'll be standing in for Bert today he's away during the welcome I mentioned seeing the hand of God at work Personally, I'm called to consider how my works and deeds and charity reflect the Spirit of God and the blessings I've been given. How might you be called? None of the work we do here at St. John's would be possible without those who generously and bravely choose to create an impact aligned with their faith by giving of time and talent. Together we ignite hearts and strengthen our faith. We are asking that you give a little extra this month for multiple needs. The Samaritan Fund is beginning to run a bit low, as often happens at this time of year. And as we begin to approach a time of higher utility bills, our request for in, uh, assistance will be increasing. The emergency needs pantry is low on food. Canned or boxed items or other non-perishable items are needed. And consider designating a portion of your gifts today to the assistance of the people in Jackson, Mississippi. I'm, without their knowledge, volunteering Jean and Vicki to assure that the donations get to people in need. Our drop box is available at the back of the sanctuary for your donations, or donations can be shared online from your mobile device via the GiveFly platform. If you are considering a legacy gift by including the church in your will and estate planning, please let the church know we'll be glad to help. Now, please stand as you are able and join in the prayer printed in your bulletin and on the screen. Please remain standing for the doxology. Thank you for this opportunity to share our gifts. Inspire us to look at the abundance we have and the needs of the world so we can share daily our resources as disciples of Jesus. Amen. Once again, I get so excited when we have kids here that I forgot to say, pick out a book. So after church, come and pick out a book, okay? Um, obviously, we have lots of family here celebrating with Darren, and we're so happy to have you here. And it's good to see Jonah and his parents, too. We also want to celebrate our learning enrichment program at Francis Street Primary School, which begins September 23rd. Harry and Michelle have been working hard with the school, and we thank them for their hard work. And also, I just want to say a special thank you to all of our volunteers. There are a number of people who are here in and out all week long, making sure that everything goes exactly the way it needs to go. And this past week, while Carl was supposed to be recuperating, uh, John and Art came in and cleaned the building for us. And I thank you very much for volunteering your time and doing a great job. Uh, I do have a couple of concerns. Um, we know that Rose Johnson continues to recuperate in Adrian, and I know that she's on Zoom with us now. And also, Don Tassie is in the hospital. So please pray for Don. Um, there's a story behind he, he was injured, and I will let Michelle Wilson tell the story following church if you want to know. But please keep him in your prayers. All right, is there... Anyone else that has a joy or a concern that we can share this morning? Okay, let's pray together. God, we come together today with gratitude as always. We look today for your blessings. We know that you see us and you know us and you love us. 
We know that there's no place that we can go where we escape from your presence, and we are so grateful for that. Thank you that we are never alone. We give thanks for our church family today from near and from far. We give thanks for our young people. We give thanks for Darren's baptism today. How amazing it is that all of our individual paths through all the days of our lives have brought us all to this place and this time. It is no accident that we are all here together today. And we thank you, God, for this divine appointment. May our care and concern for one another and for the world spill over out of our lives and out of this place. And help us remember to value every single person that we meet. We thank you, God, for so much. But we also know that there are so many who are hurting and who need healing. And so we pray especially this morning for Don, for Rose, for Janine, and for Heather. We pray, God, that you would work miracles in their lives, that they would be restored to health in mind, body, and spirit. We remember all those today who are lonely, who feel they are not invited to God's table. We especially remember those who serve in our military and all of our faithful veterans. Hold them close. We ask for guidance, God, as we try to figure out how to include those who are incarcerated those who have illness, mental illness, those who face discrimination, and we pray for compassion for those who act with hatred and in fear. We remember those in Mississippi who have no water. We think about all the places in the world that are torn by violence and disease. God, we just pray for peace for everyone in the world, especially for those in Ukraine we pray for those in Pakistan. We lift up every place we can think of, God, and we pray for every person who comes into this place or calls us for help with our Samaritan Fund. We ask for your guidance for all of the parents who attend the baby shower this month, for all of the volunteers who faithfully show up again and again. Let our church be a safe place, a sanctuary, a haven for all those who need to feel welcome and appreciated. Let everyone find security here. And now we pause for a moment of silence as we each lift up our prayers to God. We thank you, God, for hearing our silent, heartfelt prayers. And now I invite all who are able to stand with me, if you can, as we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. During the offering, I, met, I failed to mention that there is a basket uh, back at the entrance to the sanctuary for any donations you'd like to leave. Our scripture reading today is from Psalm 139, verses 1 through 6 and 13 through 18. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. 
My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. I tried to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. There ends the reading of the gospel. Let's pray. God, remind us that you are always with us, always watching, always listening, always loving. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Does anyone here ever watch the show Shark Tank? Anybody? My husband and my mother, they both love that show. For those of you who don't know what it is, it's a reality TV show for business people. So if you have a really great business idea or you have an invention, you can showcase your invention on Shark Tank and you pitch the idea to a bunch of sharks who are investors. And if the investors like your idea, they'll give you money for a certain percent of your company. And if they don't give you any money, you still got a whole bunch of national publicity because you were on the show. Now, sometimes the sharks mess things up. They have a really great idea in front of them and they don't invest. They did that about 10 years ago when a young man came before them on the show and he had something he called the doorbot. It was a video doorbell. And they did not invest in his company, but lots of people saw it and they loved the idea. And five years later, Amazon paid like a gazillion dollars for the technology for the ring, the doorbell that almost every young person wants on their front porch because the ring sees who's at your door and it sends a feed to your smartphone or your tablet so you can be anywhere. You can be in bed, you can be at the doctor's, you can be grocery shopping, and if somebody rings your doorbell, you'll see them on your phone and you can talk to them and they can talk to you. And some of these gadgets have motion detectors. So four or five o'clock in the morning, you're in bed sleeping and your phone alerts you that somebody's in your front yard. Turns out to be the neighbor and his big dog making a deposit on your lawn, but you see him because the ring sees everything. It sees all and it protects your home and it protects you. It also catches porch pirates, which is a new phrase. People who see boxes on your porch that were delivered and they run up and steal them, you can see who's taking your boxes. So it keeps you safe. The ring sees all, it hears all, it notices all, it records all, and it keeps you safe, which is exactly what God does in our reading this morning. You were wondering where I was going with that, weren't you? Our reading that Jim shared with us is one of the most celebrated and most beautiful texts in the Old Testament. It's not a poem or a song like most of the other Psalms. It's a prayer. And it's also unique for a number of, of different ways. But what I find most beautiful about it is that it describes God and this relationship that this single person has with God. Now, most of the Psalms we think were written by King David. We know that this one was not. It was not uh, recorded in the same time period in which David lived. Now, it still is very old, about 500 years before Christ, scholars believe but relatively new when you look at all of the Old Testament. Now this psalm is unusual for another reason, and that is it does not mention the nationalism of the tribe of Israel. Many of the other psalms will say, oh God, you delivered us, we remember when you brought us out of Egypt. God, we remember when you parted the Red Sea and we need you to do that again today. This psalm says nothing about that history that we read about in the book of Exodus, and that's very unusual for a psalm. It also has no mention of we or us or the community. This is a very intimate conversation 
one person talking to God, no one else in the room, a declaration of God's love and care and concern, and this person is acknowledging that. And it is incredibly beautiful for that reason. It makes it very unique. So this morning, we're going to look at just a couple of lines that Jim read. And the first thing we're going to notice is that God is aware. God sees and God knows. The psalm begins, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. And when I'm struggling to rise up. And when I'm an infant and I'm learning how to rise up. And when I'm stuck in bed and I cannot rise up. And when I'm in the upper room and I'm trying to get all the car seats and the high chairs and the diapers down, God sees it all. Then it says, you discern my thoughts from far away. Now a better translation for you discern my thoughts, according to the New Interpreter's Bible, is you read my mind. How many of you go, yikes? I don't know that I want God there. There's a whole lot of crazy sometimes between these two ears, and it's probably not a good idea for anybody to be up there. In AA, there's a saying, Alcoholics Anonymous, there's a saying, don't let anybody up there without adult supervision. You need some help with what goes on in your mind. But the psalmist is trying to say, this is how much God cares about you and how well God knows you, that God knows your thoughts. Now, for some of us, that feels like security. If you're really hurting, it's a comfort to know that God knows. But for others of us, it feels a little more like home invasion. It's like, stay back a little bit, God. Just let me get through this, and then maybe you and I can talk. Now, the ring can see when someone sits, when someone stands, when someone falls backward off your porch. You can find all these on YouTube, by the way. They're pretty funny. But it cannot read your mind, at least not yet because I am pretty sure my smartphone is already quite a bit smarter than I am, so I think it's only a matter of time. So the ring watches and protects us, and God also watches and protects. There's another line that Jim read for us that is just profound to me. And it says, you hem me in before and behind. You place your hand upon me. God's love encircles us. God protects and keeps us safe. God lets us go so far, but no further. Much like these young parents, you know where those babies are all the time, don't you? And if you don't know, you have things like nanny cam, so you can watch. Even when I take my dog on a walk, if he's off our property, he's got a harness and a leash. And he hates that, by the way. He'll let me know he does not like that leash. But I'm knowing that he can go so far and no further. And God says to us, you can go so far, but you can never get outside of my love. There's nothing you can do or say or think that separates you from the love of God. It is encircling you like a ring. So far, God is aware God is protecting us. And then we see that God does something that, thank goodness, technology cannot do. Well, I guess there's cloning, but God created each of us unique. Each one of us was planned. No matter what your parents might have told you about your being a mistake or a surprise, God planned your life. Every single day was recorded before you even came into existence That is incredible. I loved hearing that when Jim read it. I could hear that again and again, and I still cannot understand it. But what it means is everyone has divine value because we were created by God. Now, in verse 13, the author describes how God knit our lives together. And it says this, God formed our inward parts. What do you think of when you hear that God formed your inward parts? Anybody thinking of their heart, their lungs, their stomach, your intestines? The actual Hebrew word here is kidneys. God made your kidneys. Now, why would it say that? The ancient people believed that your kidneys was where your emotions were. 
the seat of your emotions was located in your kidneys. Now, I know some things that come out of kidneys, and generally they're not emotions, but that's what the people believed. Now, the social worker in the room can, can tell me if I'm wrong, but I think there's four main emotions, happy, sad, mad, scared. Yes? But according to Brene Brown, there are 87 emotions. And we're not going to go through those right now, but if you ever feel like you are just a hot mess, you can blame God because God created your kidneys, and that's where all those emotions are coming from. The psalmist then goes on to say, God created my frame. And scholars generally agree that means skeleton. That is your flesh. That could be God calling right now. Um, God is described here as creating the whole package. The emotions, the body, the, the vehicle that carries your spirit into this world. Now maybe some of us need to just remember that God marked down every one of our days before a single one came to be. That that is how important you are to God. That God knows you that well that everything that is happening, even when it's hard and even when it hurts, is not outside of God, but that God notices and knows and walks on that journey with you. You are not an accident. And it is not an accident that we are all gathered in this place and on Zoom today. All of this was ordained. And through all of the choices you make in your lives, it is a miracle that we are all here in this place. It is something to be grateful for. We are all so precious in God's sight. So if you are feeling hurting today, or if you are feeling unloved or left out, just know that God sees and God knows and God loves you and God is with you. Columnist Ina Garcia shared a story about a young man who was depressed, wanted to end his life. He had people telling him that he was worthless and could do nothing right and he believed them. So he went to a wise person and he asked this man, I just feel so sad and so disappointed with my life. I just want it to end. I'm not worth anything, and everyone agrees. Nothing I ever do works out right. Can you help me? And the wise man said, gee, I'm really busy today. I don't think I have time. But maybe you could run an errand for me, and if you run an errand for me, then maybe I will have time and we can talk later. And the young man was initially a little shocked by the response, but then reasoned, yeah, my, my life is just that unimportant that even the wise man doesn't have time for me. So he said, yeah, I'll do it. What do you need me to do? And the wise man took a battered old ring off his finger and he gave it to the young man and he said, go to the marketplace, please, and sell this ring, but don't take anything less than one gold coin for it because I owe this debt, and if you can sell this ring today and bring me the gold coin, I can pay the debt, and then I should have time to sit down and talk with you. So the young man took the ring, and he went into the marketplace, and he asked everyone he met if they would buy that ring, and there was a lot of interest in the ring. But when they heard the price, one gold coin, they all lost interest and said, no, I, I really, that's not worth a gold coin to me. And one man said, I might give you a bronze coin, maybe a silver coin, but you're never going to get a gold coin for that old ring. The young man even went on Shark Tank and asked the sharks, and they all said no as well. He goes back to the old wise man, and he's just so disappointed, and he said, I can't even do this right. I went to all these people trying to sell this ring for one gold coin, and no one would buy it. They said I could get a bronze coin or maybe a silver coin, but I know it's not worth that. And the old man said, oh, you're right. We need to have that ring appraised. We need to go to an expert who really knows jewelry, and that person can tell us how much it's worth. And once we know how much it's worth, then we can sell it. 
take the ring, go to a jeweler. So the young man then goes to a jeweler, takes the ring to her, and she looks at the ring for quite a while. And then she cleans it, and she looks at it again. And she hands it back to the young man, and she said, today, if I were to buy this ring, I could only give you 58 gold coins. But if you give me a few days, I can get together the rest of its value, and I can give you 70 gold coins. So the young man took the ring, just flabbergasted, ran back to the wise man and told him, this ring is worth 70 gold coins. It's so much more valuable than the people told me in the market. And the old man said, you are like this ring. You are unique. You were created to be special. You are worth more than you could ever imagine. But you will never find out your value and your worth in the marketplace from the crowds. You have to go to the one who created you, the one who knows you, the one who loves you, and the one who values you more than anyone else. We are all the ring. We are the ring that God created and fashioned and formed and values beyond what anything this world might tell us. The psalmist closes our reading today with an incredible line that I have missed every single time I've read this psalm until this week. The psalmist said this, I come to the end. I am still with you. God's love encircles us from birth, from before birth, all the way through our journey of life and to death. And we end up in the same place with God. We never go anywhere outside of God or away from God's love. We are always encircled. It's a beautiful prayer, by the way, to pray for someone who's vulnerable or hurting and you can't see them and you don't know what's happening in their lives, to pray some of the lines from this psalm. Maybe to pray, God, hem them in before and behind, place your hand upon them. And to remember always that no matter what happens, even through the hardest moments, we will end up where we began, with God. Now, how many of you are wearing a ring today? Anybody? You might have it on your finger, might be in your ears, your eyebrow, your nose, or some unmentionable part. Don't tell me about those parts. But I want you to notice your ring. Think about it. Maybe hold on to it for a moment. And let it remind you that this is how God loves you. From beginning to end and everywhere in between, with no end, you're never outside of God's love, but God always encircles you with love and concern. Amen. Everyone is welcome at this table. We were all designed in the hidden place. Our frames were formed in the depths of the earth, and we were all created with divine value. And that means you are all welcome at this table. Wherever you are on life's journey, whoever you are, there's a place for you here. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for forgiving us, for accepting us wherever we are. Let this table be our family table, a place to gather, a place to share, a place to belong. We remember that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks and praise, he blessed it and he broke it and he shared it with his friends saying, this is my body which was broken for you. Take and eat and whenever you do, remember me. In like manner, after supper, he took the cup and after he had given thanks and praise, he blessed it and he shared it with all of his friends saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood which was shed for each and every one of you. Take and drink, and whenever you do this, 
Think of me. We call this bread and this wine holy, sacred, set apart, consecrated. Please join me in the printed response. In the strength Christ gives us, we offer ourselves to you, eternal God. We give thanks that you have called us and accepted us. Amen. Now, if you have your communion cups, go ahead and take the wafer out. If you're at home, you can use coffee cake and coffee. That'll work. And when you're ready, let's hold our wafer up together. We're going to pause here just for a moment, make sure everybody's ready. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. Let's lift the cup together. This is the cup of salvation. Take and drink. Amen. Please join me in the printed prayer of thanksgiving. We thank you, God, for inviting us to this table and for the gifts we have received. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and let our lives be witness to the love and sacrifice of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Friends, it is time to celebrate the baptism of Darren Bentley Levon Hubbard. So we'll have the parents and the elder come up. If you two want to just stay on that side, you can be on my side. Oh, well. Jesus said, unless we are born anew, we cannot see the reign of God. Unless we are born of water and the Spirit, we cannot enter God's new order. Paul the Apostle said, all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into Jesus' death. We were buried, therefore, with Christ by baptism into death, so that as Jesus was raised from the dead, to the glory of God, we too might walk in new life. We celebrate two sacraments, communion and baptism. The early Christians celebrated the act of baptism by water as a symbol, a symbol of them leaving behind their old ways and entering the new way of Christ. Now I invite the elder to pour the water of baptism, and as she does so, Please respond with the words that are printed in the bulletin and on the screen. This is the water of baptism. Out of this water we rise with new life, forgiven of sin and one in Christ, members of Christ's body. And now I will ask some questions. The first is for Rachel and Jamie, and you can respond, we do. Do you desire to have your child baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? We do. And now I want to include the family members who are present, as well as the two of you and the elder. Will you teach this child that he might follow Christ Jesus? If so, please respond, we will. Will you all, parents and sponsors, encourage this child to renounce wrongdoing and receive the freedom of new life in Christ? 
Do you promise to be disciples of Christ, to follow his ways, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? Do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow with this child in the faith, to be a faithful member of the church? Everybody can answer, it's okay. Jesus Christ calls us all to be disciples and to make disciples. Congregation, do you who witness and celebrate this sacrament promise your love, support, and care to the one about to be baptized as he lives and grows in Christ? Please respond with the words on the screen. Let's pray. By your Holy Spirit, gracious God, bless this water. By your Holy Spirit, protect all those gathered here in the name of Jesus Christ. Create new life in the one baptized this day. And glory be to you, eternal God, the one who was and is and always shall be. Amen. Parents, what is this child's full name? Very good. I'm going to have you hold that. Okay. However you two want to do it, I want one of you or both of you to hold the baby. He will wake up, I bet. If you can get his head kind of over this, there you go. Darren Bentley Levon Hubbard, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are blessed, Darren. You are a child of God. You are a follower of Christ. And you are filled with the Holy Spirit. And you're sleeping again. <laughs> Amen. Family of God, let's welcome the newest member of the faith. Here are a couple of gifts. There are cards and a Bible. Okay. Oh, sweetheart. Thanks. All right. I need that. Thanks. Amen. Let's stand if we are able for our blessing. May you carry the love of God that never ends and is always encircling your life into this world, sharing it with everyone who is hurt and lost. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Go in peace, but make sure you stop for cake before you go.